Hi there. Today I'm going to talk about one of our new products, uh, these plastic rubble bases. It's something I'm quite excited about because I've been involved in the design of them. The reason we decided to do these is we know that a lot of people, although they like painting infantry armies, they don't much like uh, treating the bases um, because up until now you've had to use something like uh, filler or spackle, as I think it's called in the States, or um, pumice gel to uh, cover the bases um, and hide the cast on metal bases that all of our infantry figures have, um, which is time consuming. I don't mind it, but um, a lot of people say that it's um, their least favourite part of painting infantry. Um, now, they're designed to be quite easy to use. All you really need to do is what I call the squish and sprinkle technique, which I'll demonstrate for you now. Uh, first of all, just of course test the fit of your figures. Um, then all you do is get a bit of glue um, and roughly half fill the hole with glue, kind of like that. Then press the figure into place and all the excess glue will squish out around the sides and you just sprinkle on some basin grit or you know you could use sand or railway ballast pretty much whatever material you usually use to treat your bases and they come out looking something like that ready to paint. Now of course you can paint your figures before you base them uh, but if you do that you'll probably want to paint the bases as well first and then all you need to do to finish up is go back and paint the gritty bits around the edges. Right. So here we have some painted examples. Um, now they're designed to represent a kind of uh, heavily damaged urban environment, pretty much in any theatre anywhere in the war. And there's a bit of variety on the frames. Um, some of them have got cobblestones and some of them have got a more kind of general rubble and detritus and some of them have a mix. Uh, they do work pretty well together as a set of course, um, as long as you use a kind of consistent colour palette. Now, also included are a lot of these little detail plugs, which are for filling in any holes you don't want to use, so you can turn a five-man stand into a four-man stand. And a couple of them actually also have uh, six holes. That's for, you know, all-round versatility. Now, they do work for infantry guns and anti-tank guns as well, but you want to be a bit more careful about where you place the figures to make sure the guns fit nicely. So here we have some painted examples. We've got some some Russians here, by um, painted by Casey. And then right over here we've got some um, paras that were done by Mike. As you can see they all look great. Right, they're designed to make life easier, but they're not an all-round basing solution. There are a few jobs that you'll still have to use spackle or more old-fashioned techniques, such as with these uh, prone, prone figures on small bases. But as long as you use the same base and grit, and uh, similar colours, they do blend in quite nicely, as you can see. Well, that about covers it. I hope you like the new bases, and I hope they will help you get infantry painted quickly and easily. Um, so feel free to give us some feedback on the forums, and same goes for our videos too. This is my first video, so I hope you've liked it. Um, thanks for watching.